Good morning. My name is Matthew Bookett, and I'm a research fellow for the Cambodian Institute for Strategic Studies. Today, I'm joined by Ambassador William Height, US Ambassador to Cambodia. The topic of today's interview will be the World Economic Forum on ASEAN 2017, which will be hosted here in Cambodia in May. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador, for taking your time today to join us. Thank you very much for having me. I wanted to start off by asking you what you believe is the significance of Cambodia hosting this year's World Economic Forum on ASEAN. Cambodia hosting it for the first time is a sign that it's arrived on the regional business scene, that Cambodia as a business center is in that, or as Phnom Penh as a business center, is in that same rank of with all the other major business cities in ASEAN, Bangkok, Ho Chi Minh City and others. So to me it's a sort of a coming out party for Phnom Penh and for Cambodia in general on the business scene. Great. And for the actual forum this year, what do you believe is the significance of the theme chosen, which is going to be youth, technology and growth? So that theme is perfectly matched to Cambodia's demographics. Cambodia is a very young country, two thirds of the population under the age of 35. It has a growing technology sector. Um, it's, be it's becoming bigger in the region in technology issues. It's, um, it's developing rapidly. And so to me, that, that, that theme is perfectly chosen for the stage of, de of development that Cambodia is at. And this is an economy that is developing rapidly. Growth has been about 7% a year. But it's not just in those classic areas of garment production and agriculture and construction anymore. We're now seeing broad-based services growth as well, including in the technology area. So to me, it's a sign that in a, in a modern 21st day economy like this, that multiple sectors develop at the same time, including technology. So it's a very exciting theme for Cambodia at this stage in its economic development. Staying with the themes of youth and technology, in the context of U.S. engagement to Cambodia, how has the U.S. supported Cambodia in building the capacity of its youth and promoting technology? Well, in such a young country, it'll be no surprise that youth outreach is one of our highest priorities. We put a lot of, research, a lot of effort into it. I myself spend a lot of time with Cambodian youth groups. And I would say, really, we have three things we do that help on the technology side. The first thing is we have major English language teaching programs. As you know, the global technology business, it runs in English. Uh, Cambodia is a pretty international country, but, the, but we're helping hundreds of Cambodians each year learn English to a high level of fluency. The second thing we're doing is we also have some direct programs working in the tech sector and on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics skills. For example, we're one of the founding sponsors of the Cambodia Science and Engineering Festival. It just happened last week. It's a festival designed, borrowed from an American model, designed to attract young Cambodians into the, tech, uh, the science and technology fields. That's important because there's a skills deficit in those areas right now in Cambodia. We also have a number of programs working with um, working with a set of individual uh, initiatives in the areas of app development, of helping NGOs work on technology, with technology, and other things that are helping overall increase the level of, of literacy on technology issues. But I think most importantly really is at the end of the day, and this isn't so much a U.S. government thing, but it's those people-to-people -people ties between the United States and Cambodia, specifically our Cambodian-American communities now. Uh, lots of young Cambodian-Americans are are returning back to Cambodia. They're working actively in the tech sector. Some of the leaders of Cambodia's ICT Federation are Cambodian Americans. They're setting up companies. They're bringing those skills, the soft skills and the tech skills back from America to Cambodia. They're helping, helping the sector develop. And so that, that in particular is something I'm very proud of. Great, thanks. So since 1999, the World Economic Forum has tried to shift to a more inclusive approach that focuses on inviting a more diverse group of stakeholders and aiming for policies that the World Economic Founder Klaus Schwab termed to have everybody in the boat. How can inclusive approaches to global economic governance benefit ASEAN, the US and the world? That's a big question. Uh, I think that you can see the political events of the last year in England, in the United States, in Europe and other countries. One of the things that's driven those is a perception that global economic governance was not inclusive, that people were being left out, that the systems weren't working for everybody. 
And that, that feeling's been out there in developing countries for a long time. Because in many developing countries, you'll see some people in sectors growing rapidly, but other people being left out uh, and still living in, in, in poverty. Uh, so, for, so for countries like Cambodia, where, where many sectors are growing at the same time, they have a real strong interest in making sure, say, for instance, farmers and the voices of agriculture is, is, is reflected at the table, and that it's, Cambodia is a country with a major manufacturing sector making sure that there's legitimate voices of workers at the table. Those are very important things to help Cambodia, Cambodia access growth for the whole country, not just for some pockets of it. And I think in, that, that holds true for ASEAN as well. So I think that in general that those more inclusive approaches to economic governance, where the voices of those groups you don't hear from that often, that that's really important. And I think it's an area where Cambodia can really offer because it's a very international economy and work some of these vo voices can be heard. Over previous years, the US and Cambodia have continued to strengthen economic ties. How do you foresee the future of the two countries' bilateral trade relations? So we have a very large trading relationship with Cambodia. We're Cambodia's single, largest single country trading partner. Uh, Cambodia exports about $3 billion a year to the United States. Uh, our exports are lower to Cambodia, perhaps an eighth of that but rising rapidly. Uh, the, the, uh, for, for us, the most exciting things about Cambodia is the ongoing diversification. That trade was dominated by garment, the garment trade. You know, our Cambodia's exports to the United States were principally garments and footwear. But we can see now the first signs of, of a more diversified export base in Cambodia with uh, new products coming online, getting shipped to the United States in, in other areas. And so we're, we're hopeful that that's the start of a trend, which would be very good for Cambodia's development uh, of, that, of that economic diversification and a move to higher value-added products. And on the topic of um, trends for the future, what areas of investment might be of interest to U.S. firms? And what role could you see the Cambodian private sector having in attracting those kinds of investment? So on that diversification theme, keeping with that theme, if you think about the investment in the United States from American companies has been largely so far into the garment industry, but also into some domestic service providers. So you can look forward down the road and see some of the sectors that Cambodia is starting to diversify into. And I think really about food processing, technology, and, um, and, and higher value added manufacturing. Three, all three of those areas American companies are world leaders in. So to me, the next 10 years of Cambodians, Cambodia's economic development should be an area where American and Western firms are more active than the last 10 years uh, because they'll be, they'll be interested in bringing the kinds of investment and products into Cambodia that, that really weren't appropriate at a lower level of development. And so think about those three sectors, food processing, those, that's an area, Cambodia's an agricultural country, has a very large and increasingly competitive agricultural sector, but not so much of a food processing sector yet. And so that's an area where I think American companies will be very interested. Similarly, in technology and higher value added manufacturing, uh, those are areas where we're very competitive. We have large investments in Cambodia's neighbors, and where I can see a process as Cambodia grows, it becomes more attractive for American companies as well. The issue, though, the thing that Cambodia needs to focus on is integration. That is how Cambodia is a smaller market than either of its two neighbors. Uh, I'm talking about Thailand and Vietnam. Of course, it's a little bit bigger than Laos. But how to integrate Cambodia's economy to make it easier for one factory to manufacture in, in supply chains that spread on the other side of the border, how to be able to pull Cambodia into those regional supply chains. That's really the issue of the future and the one that we would encourage the government to focus on to make that possible. That's largely a question of logistics and human resources. So, Thanks. Is there anything else you would like to add? No, I would just only, I would reiterate what I said at the beginning, that to me it's a great time for Cambodia to be ho hosting the World Economic Forum regional event. It's the first time Cambodia has done it. It is a sign to me that they are emerging onto the regional business scene. Uh, it's, a, it's not just a rice fields and garment factory economy anymore. There are a lot of increasingly competitive 
uh, Cambodian companies. They're, they're working in new sectors. It's a very optimistic time for Cambodia's economy. So to me, it's a perfect time for Cambodia to hope this, and I think it's to host this forum, and I think it's going to be really very good for their international business reputation. Thank you for tuning in to this interview with CISS, and thank you again, Mr. Ambassador, for your time today. Thank you very much.